Uh, it's a uh, it's a lady's turn. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> All right, the sister friend right here just called out, so we'll get a mix here. No, right, right here, right. That, that's them that right here. Latina. Yes. Yeah. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Uh, my question is, um, there's a lot of cases that have been um, mothers losing their children because of immigration. Mm -hmm. And the, mo the kids are lost in the system. I don't think that's fair. I know, if, you know, immigration is illegal, but we have to keep the families together. What is going to happen? Well, the, the, uh, first of all, uh, you're right that uh, this is heartbreaking. The way to solve it is to solve our immigration problem more broadly. Um, in the short term, Janet Napolitano is also in charge of immigration. She's got a lot of stuff on her plate, by the way. Give Janet Napolitano a big round. She's got a lot of stuff on her plate, by the way. Give Janet Napolitano a big round of applause. She's working hard. You know, in the short term, what we're trying to do is to apply our immigration laws in a humane way that recognizes you don't want to just snatch a child from a mother. If the child's a U.S. citizen, even if the mother may not be, it's a very complicated problem, but the way sometimes this has been administered, I don't think any, any of us would feel good about in terms of reflecting American values. Right? You've got a, a small child that suddenly gets sent into some foster care system and the mother is sent away. So we've got to We've got to deal with that short-term issue. The long-term problem, though, is the fact that we are a nation of laws and we are a nation of immigrants. So we believe in immigration. The vast majority of folks here, y'all came from someplace else. And, you know, I, I don't have a lot of sympathy to folks who suddenly, uh, once they're in, don't want anybody else to come in. That doesn't make sense to me. But, but we're also a nation of laws. And that means that when there are people in Mexico City waiting in line and paying their fees and doing everything right, and they are having to wait for years, and then other folks are coming in without waiting in line, that's not fair. And it's not, it's not fair to them and it's also putting an enormous burden on, you know, for example, our borders. And it's often unsafe. A lot of people die at those borders trying to cross them. So what we're trying to do is to create a mechanism for comprehensive immigration reform that would have some basic principles. Number one, we would strengthen the borders. That has to be done. Number two, we would be serious about going after employers who are purposely hiring undocumented workers because they don't want to pay a minimum wage or they don't want to pay them overtime or what have you. You know, everybody talk, you know, you have these raids where they go in and they grab uh, 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 some undocumented workers. Yes, they broke the law, but you know, they're just trying to feed their families. Go after these big companies that are purposely hiring those folks because they're the ones who are actually taking advantage of the system. <clears throat> So that's the second thing. The third thing, then, is we've got to figure out, we've got several million, it's estimated, let's say, somewhere between 10 and 15 million undocumented workers who live here. And they've been here for a long time, and many of them have children here who are going to schools and are now U.S. citizens. And what I've said is the notion that somehow you are going to send all those folks back, you're going to line up a whole bunch of buses, and by the way, they're not all from Mexico. They're from Ireland. They're from Poland. They're from Ghana. They're <clears throat> because that's another stereotype, I think, that, that often gets promulgated. So now they have broken the law. So what I've said is, let's let's acknowledge they've broken the law. They've got to pay a fine. They've got to learn English. They've got to uh, jump through a whole bunch of hoops, pay back taxes. But let's give them a pathway whereby they can get right, they can get legal, and then, and then that way we will not have 
these kinds of situations where families are potentially being pulled apart. But it's, you've got to combine the two things. You know, sometimes there are those on the left who want immigration reform, but they don't want to acknowledge the fact that, well, we've got to strengthen our borders. And you can't just do one without the other. On the other hand, there are some folks who just say, just crack down on the borders, but they pretend like somehow we're going to send back 12 million people, and we're not. So let's you know, just get serious about this and solve the problem, and I think that we've got an opportunity to solve it uh, in the next year or two. All right? Thank you very much. Okay, it's a guy's turn. It's a man's turn. <laughs> guy's trying to flash his credentials here. <laughs> this gentleman right here. You. Yes, sir. Right there. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon. And What's your name, sir? Elliot Labat, New nice. Orleanian, all the way. There you go. Nice to meet you, sir. Welcome to New Orleans. Thank you, sir. My question is regarding health care reform. For years, uh, well, I'm on Social Security, and so is my wife, Peggy. Hey, Peggy. <laughs> she's, very, she's very attractive. Thank you. <laughs> We've just celebrated our 50th anniversary. Hey, give her a round. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, regarding health care reform, uh, we've been on Social Security for a while, and every year, uh, up until now, the, the Social Security Administration has announced uh, inflationary increases. Uh, my question is this, is that what can health care reform do, or what will it do, to help reduce the cost of Part B? Because Part B takes away what increases we've gotten in the past. Well, first of all, uh, let me point out that uh, under the formula, Social Security would not see a COLA this year, an automatic COLA increase because we've actually had deflation, right? Costs have gone down 6%. But because of the hardships that folks on fixed income have still experienced, uh, I've been supportive of the idea that a one-time $250 payment to seniors would be an appropriate approach which would approximate, would come out to about 1.8% increase. Okay, so that just deals with the issue of uh, what's going on with Social Security. In terms of Part B and rising costs generally, here's what we believe health reform would do. First of all, it would contain costs generally, and this is not now our assertion, this is the assertion of the Congressional Budget Office, which is nonpartisan, that it would start lowering costs across the board because it would change how we use our medical system. You know, it, our medical system is so inefficient. You know, we get five tests when we only need one. We have paperwork and bureaucracy all through the system. You go into a doctor, you have to fill out five forms. But you notice this is the only area of of uh, the economy that's not uh, digitalized. You know, it's very easy for you, to, uh, for, the, for the credit card companies to find you and send you your bill, but somehow you can never get a decent bill that makes sense and that you can read in healthcare because of all the paperwork involved. So there are ways that we can streamline the system that will reduce costs, and that will help control costs not just in the private sector, but also for Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. Now, the other thing that is important is that one of the biggest costs for seniors is prescription drugs. And we are estimating that we can save a minimum of $80 billion, and it may be more, that will help close the donut hole on prescription, uh, prescription drugs for seniors under Medicare. If you combine these various savings that would affect both Part B and Part D, then we actually believe that over the long term you would not see health care costs going up at 8% when your Social Security check's only going up 2 or 